Justin Haley will leave Call Racing at the end of 2023 and join Rickler Racing starting in 2024. And Shane Van Gisbergen will return at the Indy Road Course and might join NASCAR full-time in 2024. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. we got a ton of NASCAR and other motorsports stories discussed today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into those really, really quickly. We're going to have a start and talk about Brian Flint. As it was announced on Wednesday afternoon that Brian Flint is now the new GM of Sonoma Raceway. Joe Greger, who's been a GM for the last couple years, has formed a consulting firm with Speedway Motorsports, and she is the first client of that group. This is really, really great to see. Brian Flynn's been working, I believe, with Speedway, Speedway Motorsports and NASCAR and been working in the sport for the last couple years. This is a really good opportunity. Love the fact he's getting a chance and opportunity to work as a GM of Sonoma, and hopefully he'll do a really awesome job and great job as the GM. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about gambling. As NASCAR made a new update in Bob Packard's Portis, but NASCAR has updated its sports gambling policy. And according to the new rule, it says you can't promote sports books that aren't in compliance with laws. I think it's something that doesn't surprise a lot of people. It's basically for the NASCAR members. I think a lot of the NASCAR members kind of knew this, but I think NASCAR wants to make sure that they are following the guidelines and they're following the rules. But that's the new updates to the sports guidelines, and I don't have a problem with them updating those sports guidelines and those rules. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode, as we're going to talk about the Pocono Purse money for this weekend. So every time we have a NASCAR Cup, Xfinity Series, and Truck Series race, Bob Pockers puts out the purse money. And according to him, for the Cup race, is $7,243,361 million. For the Xfinity Series, it's $1,441,027. And for the Truck Series race, it's $757,274. Obviously, with the Cup Series, you got all the charter money that really comes into play. There's no extra drivers in the field and no extra teams in the field. So there's less money than there'd be if there were more cars in the field like it's going to be at the Indy Road Course. Nonetheless, it's some pretty good purse money for this weekend. And I love the fact that purse money is flying through the roof. And hopefully, we'll see a lot more people out on the racetrack in the future. But nonetheless, some pretty good purse money for this weekend. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Pocono. As Pocono this weekend is going to be debuting a new victory lane. For the last 40 years, they basically had a balcony kind of victory lane they had for a very, very long time. And now they've got a new victory lane that is going to be coming into play. If you want my opinion, I'm disappointed that the old school victory lane that's been there for a long time is unfortunately going away. I like the old victory lane they had for a very long time. And I am disappointed to see there's going to be a new victory lane because I'm not as big fan of this new one. Granted, they can make changes to the new victory lane over time and maybe it could be a new tradition that we end up seeing. But overall, I am disappointed they got a new victory lane, but I'm not surprised they made changes. Obviously, there were some big uh, things that basically got changed during the, with Pocono recently, and they basically have a new improved victory lane according to them. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about IndyCar in tires. Now, Nathan Brown reported this, I believe, yesterday, but IndyCar has mandated new rear wheel bearing retaining nuts for Iowa, and it's because of it, 60% increase in strength to those bearing nuts. The reason is because of what happened at the Indianapolis 500. Felix Rosequist had crashed and clipped Kyle Kirkwood at such a high speed that the tire basically flew over the catch fence and basically threw over there and nearly clipped people and it clipped a car basically in the parking lot near the golf course, if I'm not mistaken. And overall, I think this is a really great decision by IndyCar. They want to, safety is 100% the number one thing you got to be prioritizing. And overall, I love the fact that they've gone ahead and done this. I think it's cool that they've upgraded this. Obviously, what happened, I think, it was a freak incident. It just sheared the complete bearing off, and that's not a normal thing. Of course, IndyCar has. I made some changes this year to fix that. I'm glad they're making more changes because safety is our more priority, and you don't want to get people getting seriously hurt. So good to see that they've made these changes, and I'm very happy to see overall that they've improved the situation when it comes to the tires. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're going to talk about Chad Chastain. As it was announced on Wednesday evening that Chad Chastain will drive the 20 for Young's Motorsports this weekend at Pocono. Chad Chastain, who is the younger brother of Ross Chastain, has made some select starts in the last couple of years. And Chad Chastain's had some decent runs, but hasn't ran completely fantastic. Now, I'm not expecting Chad Chastain to get ten up front now because I don't think he has talent. But we know that Young's Motorsports are not the fastest organization in the world in the truck series. Nonetheless, this is a great opportunity for him, and hopefully he can have a really good run in the 20 truck for Young's Motorsports this weekend at Pocono. 
And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Alex LeBay. As it was announced and reported by Joseph Sergal yesterday that Alex LeBay will drive a zero rate for SS Greenlight Racing this weekend at Pocono. Alex LeBay has driven for quite a few different teams this year. He's driven for Emerlin Gates a couple times. He's driven for DGM Racing, which team he's generally ran for most of his career. And he's also driven for SS Greenlight Racing, I believe, in the past. And will once again have an opportunity and a chance to run for them this weekend. Obviously, SS Greenlight has struggled this year in 2023 with the owner's point situation, but they will be locked in this week if rain does come into play later today. Nonetheless, it's a really great opportunity for Alex Zabane. and hope he can make the most of it and have a strong run this weekend at Pocono because I wanted to do good, and hopefully he can do a really good job this weekend. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Robert Wickens. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Robert Wickens and potentially trying to run the 2024 Indianapolis 500 or come back to IndyCar. And Robert Wickens is still hoping to return to IndyCar someday. And he would like to run the 2024 Indianapolis 500. But Brian Herter has been very realistic and he says there needs to be a lot of testing done and there needs to be sponsorship as well. I'm not really sure what sponsors Robert Wickens would have. Obviously, he's been competing with Brian Herter's team in a TCR series in IMSA, and he's been doing a really good job in win winning races. And one of the things I've been wanting to see for a long time, one of my dreams to see, is Robert Wickens come back. Because if he does come back, it's going to be a very emotional day for this sport overall. And just, I hope he gets to run the Indy 500 next year. Like I said, sponsorship funding is really going to be a really key and a major thing when it comes to that. You're going to need sponsorship funding if you want to be successful in the sport and want to be able to race. So over Overall, hopefully this is something that gets resolved and it finds some sponsors and funding so we can go ahead and see him go out and race, maybe an IndyCar, and maybe run the Indy 500 once again. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about Sage Karen. As it was announced on Wednesday early afternoon that Sage Karen will drive a 24 for Sam Hunt Racing next weekend at Road America while the Cup and Truck Series will be racing at Richmond. Obviously, Sage Karen has made quite a few starts here for Alpha Prime Racing is driven for other organizations as well. So this is definitely a little bit of a shock. So he's been a Chevy driver the last year or two. Now he's going to be driving a Toyota for the first time, I believe, in his NASCAR career. Sage Karam last year obviously had issues with Noah Grayson in this race, but I think Sage Karam does have a lot of talent. He's a very solid road course racer, and I think Sage Karam could be a contender for maybe as an outside chance to win. We've seen Sam Hunt Racing have some decent runs, especially this year, though they have struggled a little bit more than I thought they were going to in 2023. Nonetheless, it's a great opportunity for Sage Karam, and hopefully he can do really awesome and a really good job behind the wheel next weekend at Road America in the Sam Hunt car. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about the Chicago Street Course. Now, we've had some negative reports before the event happened, but ever since the race happened, there's been a lot more positive reports. And according to Adam Stern, there was a report that came out saying that it was a no Taylor Swift concert. But the NASCAR Chicago Street Race helped Chicago Tells hit the biggest pre-July 4th weekend revent, re revenue totals in nearly a decade. Now, I don't know why they mentioned Taylor Swift, considering Taylor Swift is basically selling out stadiums everywhere. That made no sense to me why he added that part of that. But when it comes to Chicago Street Course and the success of this event, I was very skeptical of the race itself, and I wasn't a big fan of the race initially. But over time, I grew to become a fan of this event, and overall seeing the revenue come into play for hotels and people coming in from across the country and across the world, checking out the Street Course event, I think is really awesome overall, really, really great to see. And hopefully, this event does come back next year in 2024. And I think there's a good chance, especially with the revenue coming in, and I think a lot of the hotel people are going to be voting yes. The big question is going to be will it come back next year i think it will but it's going to be one thing to watch but to see that there's at least some positive momentum for the event overall is really exciting and i love the fact that there's a little bit more positive energy around this event there was a lot of negative energy in the beginning but i've seen a lot more positive energy especially as of recently and now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about road america now Road America has hosted a NASCAR Cup Series race the previous two years, but this year in 2023, due to the event being moving to Chicago Street Course, they did not host an event this year. So for the Cup Series, I should say, the whole course hosts the Xfinity Series race next weekend. And according to Adam Stern, he reported on this, and they say is we don't have any ill will at all about not having a NASCAR Cup Series race. We had a great event for two years. There's nothing to be salty about. 
I'm glad to say that Road America is not frustrated because Road America, let's be honest, they get a lot of revenue from the autocross events they have there, and they also get a lot of revenue from all the other racing events, like maybe some of the uh, sports car events end up happening there, and other motorsports events that happen there overall, including the Trans Am Series. So they get a lot of money from other events that really help them, and Road America can survive. They've been around for a very, very long time, for many years. They were able to host events for many years. But if you want my honest opinion, I really want to see Road America in the long-term future come back onto the NASCAR Cup Series schedule because I know that basically it's only been one year, but I feel like the Road America deserves another opportunity and a shot. I know the racing wasn't great in 2022, but I really think it deserves another shot. I think the road course product has gotten better in 2023, and NASCAR is working to make that better, even better for 2024. I miss Road America being on the Cup schedule. I hope it gets an opportunity to shot once again in 2024. Great. I think there's basically a lot of there a lot of fans who don't want a lot a ton of road course, and I completely understand that. But Road America has been around a lot longer than some of these other tracks have been around. Though I will say, Coda will likely be on the schedule long term. But I would love to see Road America have another chance and an opportunity long term to potentially make a return. And now we're going to hedge bonds to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Ryan and Newman. Now, Ryan Newman actually spoke to Matt Weaver from Sports Night, and Ryan Newman kind of revealed his thoughts on the next-gen car. And he says he's not a big fan of the next-gen car. He doesn't really think much about it. He says the two main things he brings up are the aerodynamics of the next-gen car and the safety aspect. If anybody's going to talk about safety and I someone have to kind of agree with the safety issues, it's definitely Ryan Newman. And that's one of the reasons I think why Ryan Newman has not ran full-time in NASCAR. Obviously, Ryan Newman has made a return this year in 2023. There's someone I'm going to trust when it comes to safety for, is good, definitely going to be Ryan Newman. And I completely understand that. There's been a lot of safety issues with the next-gen car. But NASCAR has been working to fix some of those safety issues. And I will say NASCAR has been a lot more proactive with safety. And they've been one of the most practice sports when it comes to safety over the last 20-something years. But the next-gen car did have some pretty big safety issues. But like I just said, I do believe the NASCAR has been working to fix some of the safety issues that the action car has had, and I'm glad that they're continuing to work on that. Obviously, Ryan Newman does completely trust it, and I completely respect him for that. But we know the NASCAR, they're working to fix some of the safety issues, and I'm glad that they are continuing to work on that. And I think they are going to continue working on that to make the safety better on these next-gen cars. They made some big changes in the front clips. There was big issues at Talladega after Kyle Lewis and Ryan Priest crashed, but NASCAR has worked to make those fixed and get those issues resolved. Nonetheless, I really respect Newman a lot. And aerodynamics is an issue, especially in the short tracks. I will agree that there are major aero issues, but there is an action test that's coming up next week after the Cup race of Richmond. I hope they stream that because I want to see that test on the Monday, Tuesday. Hope the weather is really good so we can have that test in a week or two. Nonetheless, I'm glad to say that basically Ryan Newman, I do agree for Ryan Newman that there are issues in the next-gen car that do need to be resolved, and hopefully they do get resolved long-term in the foreseeable future. And now we're we'll going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about video games. Now, I've talked a little bit about video games when it comes to NASCAR, but it was a poor at Adam Stern last night that NASCAR has a substantial announcement coming soon related to console video games, according to Hunter Cook. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk conversation about video games and NASCAR. There's going to be a game that's actually coming out this year, but it's not completely NASCAR related, though it is kind of related to NASCAR in a sense. But it's been no secret there's been a lot of conversation about it because of motorsports games. Motorsports games have been a lot under a lot of fire. The original CEO, Dimitri Costco, stepped down, and Steve Hood has kind of taken over as a new CEO of the company. And obviously, MSG, they've had a lot of problems. They've had a lot of bad products released. I really haven't played any of the games, because I, but I think a lot of the games have been absolutely terrible. NASCAR 21 Edition is regarded as one of the worst NASCAR games ever. Probably the worst NASCAR game ever. And obviously, NASCAR 5, with the new update that came out, you had to pay for it despite being prepaid, which I don't understand why you prepay for a DLC. If you did that, I don't think you're a smart person for that. But in my opinion, I hope that this is the end of MSG. And maybe Monster Games takes over, or maybe just because Monster Games is kind of technically owned by Dale Jr., or Dale Jr. is working with them, I think, so they can get Monster Games back into play. And I think, from what I understand, the World of Outlaws game is actually very, very good, and I feel like that they could make a better game now with the Monster Games branding than basically the Motorsports Games, because MSG... They're a terrible company. They're awful. And I really hope NASCAR leads them. Because, again, I've heard rumors that there's a big announcement coming soon. And it sounds like that announcement could be coming 
in a foreseeable future in regards to that. We'll keep following the story. I want to get my hopes up, don't get me wrong, but again, you can't keep your, get your hopes up, especially when it comes to companies like Motorsports Games. They're a terrible company. The IndyCar game got was supposed to come out this year and coming out, which isn't a shock or surprise. There's been really no good products that have been released. Obviously, they released Heat 5 update because of basically people making a modded game, basically making Heat 5 modded, and I think they were like, you know what, we saw that, we're going to want to ruin that for a lot of people. So overall, it's interesting to watch. It's interesting to see. And nonetheless, I really hope that they can release something good, but I really don't trust any of the companies. And hopefully we can get a good company in the future, but I don't trust any of the companies currently at the moment. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Kyle Busch. Now, we do have a couple of Kyle Busch stories to talk about today. But the first one is what Kyle Busch said to Carly Crandall from Racer.com. And Kyle Busch has dreamt up of a scenario where he retires from Cup, where he runs a full gear in the truck series to try to become the first driver to win a championship in all three of NASCAR divisions. Obviously, he's got two NASCAR Cup Series championships and Xfinity Series championship back in 2009. And before splitting the truck with Brexton Bush, his son. Now, Brexton Bush is currently, I believe, eight years old at this particular moment. So it would be about seven or eight years before he had an opportunity to run in the truck series. I believe you have to be 16 years of age to run the truck series, even on a part-time basis. But Kyle Busch currently right now is 38 years old. He just turned 38 back in late May. And Kyle Busch has been having a really successful career. So it tells me that Kyle Busch is probably going to retire sometime around 2030, 2031, which means Kyle Busch probably has about seven or eight years left of his NASCAR Cup Series career before he decides to retire, which by that point, by 2030, he'll be around 45 years old anyways. And Kyle Busch, like I said, he wants to go out and win a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series championship, which I think he honestly could. I know that Kyle Busch hasn't been as good this year in trucks as he's been previous years, but I think he would absolutely be a championship threat and a championship contender from the get-go. And you would get someone in there who has veteran presence, because let's be honest, the truck series, they need a lot of veteran presence currently at the moment. Like the truck series used to have guys like Mike Skinner and Ron Hornig racing back in the day and Todd Bodine as well. You don't have as much to have veteran presence. You have a lot of young kids coming into play. And I think Kyle Busch wants to be someone who could be in there to guide the truck series. We obviously know Kyle Busch eventually wants to go back down and race in the truck series full time. And I think it'd be really cool to see Kyle Busch go out there and win a truck series championship and become the first person to win all three championships, the Cup, Xfinity, and truck series stuff. And you think about Brexton Bush. Brexton Bush, a lot of people, even Kyle Larson says he's the best up and coming talent, according to Kyle Larson. And Brexton's only eight years old, so that tells you everything you need to know. But I think Brexton Bush does have a lot of talent, and you think he's someone who could be very successful in the long term future. But Brexton said Brexton's only eight. And I think that by this point, Kyle Busch will win a lot more NASCAR Cup Series races. I think he'd be a champion, another champion, maybe this year in 2023. I look at Phoenix being a potential possibility of getting that third championship. But nonetheless, it's good to see that Kyle Busch does have a succession plan planned out for the future. And obviously, overall, it's good to see that Kyle Busch does have somewhat of a succession plan for his team in the foreseeable future. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're going to talk about the number 31 car for 2024. Now, obviously, yesterday it was announced. We'll talk about this on the channel here in just a little bit. But basically, Justin Ealing is going to be leaving car racing at the end of the 2023 season. So now the big question is who's going to take over the 31 car in 2024? Well, the three lead candidates that a lot of people mentioned are Austin Hill, Chandler Smith, and Shane Van Gisbergen. Austin Hill does not have a ride for Cup for 2024, and Austin Hill's no secret has said publicly that he wants to go Cup racing full time in the 2024 season. Chandler Smith currently drives full time for Gog in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, but some people do believe that despite Chandler Smith being very impressive in the Xfinity Series in 2023, they believe that Chandler Smith is not ready to make the jump up to Cup currently at the moment on a full-time basis. Though I will say in his only NASCAR Cup Series start, the points paint edition, he did end up finishing in 17th place. And then Shane Van Gisberg, and a lot of people mentioned, which we're going to talk about later, is a name that keeps getting mentioned quite a bit as well for a potential full-time NASCAR Cup Series ride. And of course, as part of the Chevy camp, though I don't think he's linked to any current manufacturer at this particular moment. But when it comes to the 31 car, I would have to likely say Austin Hill or SVG are the two favorites. Well, I think Chandler Smith would be a really good option to go with going to next year. Believe me, I still don't know if he's completely ready at this particular moment to make the jump up. But if you want my honest opinion for the 31 car, I think it comes down to Austin Hill and Shane Van Gisberg. And we'll talk a little more and discuss in regards to what I think can happen in the 31 next year. I don't think Colg is going to sell their charters because Colg does have two charters. Some people thought Todd Braun, who is the uncle of Justin Haley, was going to sell one of the charters. But it doesn't sound like he is going to sell a charter at the end of this year. 
It is going to be interesting to see what happens in regards to who ends up in the 31 in 2024. But right now, those are the three names that people keep mentioning. And maybe another wild card could be Matt DiBenedetto. I know it's kind of crazy to think about it. Matt DiBenedetto. A lot of people feel like could be someone who go to Xfinity next year and do a pretty good job with Call of Racing. Maybe they call it Matt DiBenedetto. I think he could do also a really good job in the 31 car. But I think it's going to be between the main three that I mentioned for 2024. Maybe could they call up Carl Edwards too? Who knows at this point? Anything's possible and nothing's guaranteed. But we'll continue to watch who ends up getting in the 31 car heading into 2024. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Kyle Busch once again. Now, Kyle Busch apparently has another new sponsor that is going to be on the track at Michigan Speedway. This is currently posted on Facebook and also been shared around on Twitter recently that Kyle Busch has a new sponsor. And the new sponsor is a sponsor that has been announced for the past, and that is Quick Trip. But if I'm not mistaken, I do not believe that Quick Trip has sponsored Kyle Busch or basically sponsored Rich Schultz Racing before. So this is really cool to see that Kyle Busch has a new sponsor. That's one of the reasons why Kyle Busch lost his ride with Joe Gibbs Racing was because of the fact they couldn't find any sponsor funny. But now this is telling the fourth new sponsor that has come into play to sponsor Kyle Busch in 2023 that is was not part of Rich Schultz Racing. Nesbin was the first one. Mark III Van Benefits was another one. Also for the truck series, he's had another, I think, Zeros Transports come and sponsored him as well. And he also had another sponsor, LA Golf, sponsored him in the NASCAR Xfinity Series as well. Now, obviously, you've had companies like Lenovo and 3 g that were sponsor of Tyler Reddick last year and Rich Schultz Racing last year come back for 2023 because they really like Kyle Busch. But Kyle Busch is really awesome and great to see that Kyle Busch is continuing to pick up sponsors. And that tells you everything you know what's been going on with Joe Gibbs. But you have to remember, Joe Gibbs does things a lot different than basically how basically Rich Schultz Racing does it. With Joe Gibbs, they want to bring in a full season sponsor to basically sponsor the whole entire year. Bitch, it's a different model than the way that Kyle Busch gets sponsored now, Rich Schultz Racing, where they piece by piece. But I think that's the way long term it's going to go. The way that Joe Gibbs does it, I think, is going away. And I think you're going to basically see a lot of teams go basically go the way that we're seeing Rich Schultz Racing go currently at the moment when it comes to the sponsorship model. It is definitely changing overall and it's something to watch long term. But nonetheless, it's great to see that Kyle Busch likely has a new sponsor for 2023, his fourth new sponsor. Obviously, I think a lot of us want to see Bush maybe even in the future come sponsor Kyle Busch, even though they're going to sponsor Ross Chastain next year in 2024. So I'd love to see a Budweiser number eight car in the future. But this does look really cool. I love the new paint scheme. And nonetheless, it is great and awesome to see that Kyle Busch likely, likely has a new sponsor for the next, not next week, but later this year in Michigan near the end of the regular season. And hopefully Kyle Busch does continue to get more new sponsors because I think he's been doing a really good job this year on track and also having his best Cup Series season up to this point since 2019. Nonetheless, it's awesome and great to see that Kyle Busch does have technically a new sponsor for Michigan. And now we're going to hedge on to the next major story of today's episode as we're talking about Ryan Priest. There's been a lot of talk about Stuart Haas racing when it comes to silly season, and it revolves mainly around the 10 car who's going to take that 10 car heading into 2024. The names have been mentioned are Michael and Dallas Zane Smith, who are favorites for the 10 car, shall Eric Almirola retire. But another ride that has been mentioned from Stuart Haas Racing, we don't know currently at this moment, is the number 41 car. According to Rumblings, Ryan Priest is on a contract year with Stuart Haas Racing through the end of this year. He only signed a one-year deal with the team. But many in the industry do believe, despite the struggles of Ryan Priest in 2023, many, including Ryan Priest, believe that he is expected to return to Stuart Haas Racing in 2024. Now, what he's hoping for for the rest of 2023 to make sure that he continues driving that number 41 car in 2024 is some improvement on the racetrack. Ryan Priest has not had a great year in 2023. Right now, he currently sits 26 in the points. But what's crazy about this is right now, Ryan Priest is the second highest in points of the Sewer Haas racing cars. The best, which is no surprise to anybody, is Kevin Harvick currently sits ninth in the points. But Aragon Roll is 27th, and Chase Briscoe is 31st. Now, granted, Chase Briscoe would be ahead of Ryan Priest by about ten or by five or six positions right now, if not for the 120-point penalty. But Chase Briscoe has definitely struggled as well in the Cup Series this year. Look, I think Ryan Priest is a very talented NASCAR Cup Series driver, but very similar to the other drivers at Stewart Racing outside of Kevin Harvick. I think a lot of struggles come down to the team. 
Sewer Haas Racing has not been a lead team for a very, very long time. And to a lot of people, they really have never been in a lead team. And they've had one of the worst seasons. And it's only second year of the next-gen car. Last year, they were probably a better team. But Cole Custer did not do great. But I'm going to say this. Cole Custer may have not been a problem at Sewer Haas Racing overall. But look at Sewer Haas Racing. I think Ryan Priest is a really talented driver. And if you give him good equipment like he had at Martinsville, where he was up for contending for the win in the beginning of that race where he had the speeding penalty, I think Ryan Priest is a very good driver. And I think he does deserve another chance and another shot and an opportunity to return to Super Haas Racing in the 2024 season. Because I think he will do better in 2024. I think SHR has got a, thing, a lot of things they need to clean up. Maybe some big changes in the higher up of the team. Maybe they get rid of Greg Zipadelli. Maybe make some big improvements and bring some people in as well that could really help the team. Obviously, like I said, they got Josh Berry coming in next year in 2024. And there's a good chance that Michael McDowell might join and drive the 10 car next year in 2024, though that's not completely confirmed. But it all sounds very likely that Eric Ombrell and Mike retire at the end of the 2023 season. But Ryan Priest, I, like I said, I think deserves another shot and opportunity. And also a little bit of an older driver as well. And I think Tony Stewart wants Kate Brown because Tony Stewart was the one who really made the decision to bring Ryan Priest in. Tony Stewart is a big fan of Ryan Priest. That's why he got asked to run the Asterix. And Tony Stewart, of course, runs the Asterix. And Ryan Priest is a, from the Safford area. He's one almost had a chance to win the Safford Asterix race last time before brake issues became a play, came, came into play. But I think Ryan Priest does deserve another shot and an opportunity to to come back to Sewer Haas Racing next year because I think he is going to improve next year in 2024. I think he's a good driver. I mean, remember back his truck stats last year. Ryan Priest, I think, had a 11th place average finish or didn't finish worse than 11th, and he was really consistent in the 12 or 13 races that he basically ran in trucks last year with DJR Racing before they became Tricon. So nonetheless, I'm glad to see. I hope Ryan Priest does come back next year because I think he deserves an earth shot and their opportunity. I hope Suros Racing gives him that chance and opportunity to come back in 2024, but it sounds like right now at this moment, he will get another year. Maybe change up the crew chief because Chad Johnson isn't the greatest crew chief in the world. I know they've had a good working relationship in trucks the last couple of years, but I think Ryan Priest does deserves another chance and opportunity to continue driving a 41 car in the 2024 season. And now we're going to go on to the first of two major stories in today's episode as we're talking about Shane Van Gisbergen, also known as SVG. Now, we talk about us in the channel in a special report, but Shane Van Gisbergen is once again going to be returning to the NASCAR Cup Series at the Indy Road Course in two weeks or three weeks from now and will drive for Praja 91 once again at the Indianapolis Road Course. This will be the second race that she has ran this year in 2023, as Shane Van Gisbergen has already run at the Chicago Street Course, and guess what? He went on to win that event, holding off Justin Haley to pick up the victory. We'll get into Justin Haley here in just a little bit. Shane Van Gisbergen, I think a lot of people are expecting to go out and easily win this event like he won last week. But I think Shane Van Gisbergen will have a little more of a difficult time to go out there and win. But I think that this is something that had to happen, because especially after getting that first win for this team, you had to bring him back. And I think it's a really great opportunity and a fantastic opportunity to see Shane Van Gisbergen come back and run for the team once again this year at the Indy Road Course, because we know that Justin Marks has said they were initially not going to bring this car back for 2023, but I think after the success of the event, they're like, you know what, we want to bring Shane Van Gisbergen back. But there's a lot of questions about around Shane Van Gisbergen and him potentially running full-time in NASCAR in the 2024 season. A lot of speculation from the Supercar Paddock is saying in the support by Adam Stern earlier in the week, according to V8 Sleuth, that there's a lot of speculation that he could join NASCAR full-time in the 2024 season. Now, obviously, Shane Van Gisbergen doesn't have a lot of oval experience, but he does have some dirt racing experience, which is which they do race on ovals quite a bit, especially racing in Australia. Of course, he's from New Zealand, but he does race in Australia in the VA Supercars. He's not winning the championship currently at the moment. Will Brown, I believe, is winning that championship at this given moment. But Shane Van Gisbergen, I think a lot of his fans, including myself, want to see come to NASCAR full-time. So now we ask, where could he potentially drive in the 2024 season? Well, I think a lot of there are a lot of potential possibilities. The first team that he going to drive for is Colleg Racing. Obviously, we're talking about Justin Hilly. He's going to be leaving Colleg Racing at the end of the 2023 season to join Rick Ware Racing. And that is a pretty solid team overall. And I could see him driving in that car full-time in 2024 and doing a pretty solid job, especially teaming up with AJ Allmendinger, who's also a really strong road course racer and a pretty good oval racer in his own right as well. I think he could be someone who could give Shane Van Gisbergen a lot of advice when it comes to that. And I think that they would love to have him on the team. The next team he could end up driving for is Richard Childress Racing in a third Richard Childress Racing car. 
Richos racing their brand of 33 car back this year, and I love the number. I think it would be really cool to see him get an opportunity shot to drive and be teammates with Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon next year. That could be a potential possibility, but of course, Charter is going to come into play. The next team he could drive for is Trackhouse Racing, and this could be a really big possibility as well now because Trackhouse, again, they could expand next year. They have talked about potentially expanding to three full-time cars in 2024, though I will say they were looking at Corey LeJoy. We now know Corey LeJoy is if I could sign a multi-year contract essential with Spire Motorsports. Another team that they could sign with, though, is 2311 Racing. 2311 Racing, they want to expand in 2024. They had that third 2311 Racing car. The guys like Kurt Busch are wanting to come back around. Obviously, Kurt, that car is mainly reserved for Kurt Busch, but they've had drivers like Kamui Kobayashi make his NASCAR Cup Series debut in the number 13 car and number 67 car, I should say and basically other guys to get an opportunity to shot like a Travis Pastrana, and obviously maybe sometime Carl Edwards could get an opportunity and a shot to run in that car as well. But another wild card possibility is him driving maybe for Stuart Haas Racing in the 10 car. Like I said, right now we don't know who's going to be the 10 car. Obviously, Michael McDowell and Zane Smith are the favorites to take over that 10 car in 2024. But I could definitely for sure see him getting a chance to run full time, go with this race to the supercar experience, and bring veteran presence in. But going back and talk about this Indy Road Course race when it comes to him, this is a great opportunity. And this event is becoming a stacked event. You've got a lot of really talented and great drivers who are going to be running this event. Obviously, Brody can second make his NASCAR Cup Series debut, who's second in the Repco Supercars Championship at the moment. And number 33 car for Rich Schultz Racing, which obviously Rich Schultz Racing has now won quite a few road course races recently with Tyler Reddick. They've nearly won races with Kyle Busch. You've also got a basic Kamui Kobayashi, we'll talk about a second ago, driving a 6-7 car for 20-11 racing. Tyler Reddick's won with 20-11 racing on a road course this year. I feel like 20-11 racing's road course program has definitely gotten better this season. And then you've also got Jensen Bunny's going to be driving a 15 car for Rickware Racing, and basically that is an SHR repair car. Yes, you do have lines of RFK, but that is an SHR repair car that Jensen Button is driving. And I just love the fact you've got other guys like maybe Jimmy Johnson comes back and runs the Indy Road Course. You've also got a potential possibility. I believe Andy Lally is going to be running as well in the 51 car, and Connor Daly is going to be in the 50 car as well for the money team. So this event is becoming stacked overall, and you got a lot of great drivers. I think Shane's chance of winning, like I said, are going to be a little more difficult because a lot of drivers do have a little bit more advantage because they've ran here a little bit more than what they did in Chicago. But I think Shane Van Gisberg, of how good Trackhouse has been on the road course the last couple of years, I think that you're going to see Shane Van Gisberg and have an opportunity and a shot to potentially win. But I think there's also a great chance he goes full-time in 2024. But we'll have to wait and see what happens in regards to what happens for Shane in 2024. And now we're going to head to on to the final major story of today's episode as we're talking about Justin Hilly. Now, I've talked about Justin Hilly a couple times in this episode, but it was shockingly announced yesterday that Justin Hilly is going to leave Colin Racing at the end of the 2023 season, and he will join Rick or Racing full-time starting in the 2024 season. And according to reports, it is a multi-year deal. Now, something interesting to you know when it comes to Port, when they said our Ford Mustang, this tells me that there's a really good chance and possibility that Ricker Racing is going to be downsizing maybe from a two-car operation down to one-car operation in 2024, and they may sell a charter at the end of the 2023 season to give to another team, maybe like Trackus or maybe a team like Junior Motorsports, perhaps, to make the jump up the cup full-time. But this is something interesting, you know, a lot of people were talking about this yesterday saying that this is overall a really bad move, but this is definitely a major, major shock, because I'll be honest with you, I thought that Justin Lee was going to return to Call of Racing in 2024, because he's had a really good working relationship with Call of Racing for a long time. He started driving for Call of Racing back in the Xfinity Series days, back in the 2019 season, so he's been with the team now for five years. So I am genuinely shocked and surprised that he's leaving Call of Racing, because let's be honest, I think Call of Racing right now, at this moment, they are a better team than Rick Ware Racing. But I will give Rick Ware Racing the benefit of the doubt. Ricker Racing as a team, they have been a much better organization in the 2023 season compared to where they were last year. Granted, they don't have Cody Ware on the team anymore. I think that helps everything, but they've a lot of, brought a lot of veteran presence in the team. Guys like J.J. Yealy, Cole Custer, and Ryan Newman. And I will say Ricker Racing has gone from basically being a back-of-the-pack organization to basically being a, basically not a back of the pack still a little bit of back-of-the-pack, but they're running a little bit closer to the front. And J.J. Yealy this year has scored four top 20 finishes in the 2023 season, which is pretty good for Rick Ware Racing standards. 
And you also remember that they have an alliance with RFK. And that's something to think about as well. How much longer is Brackis Lossie going to end up driving full time in Cup? Because I honestly think that this is kind of helped by Brackis Lossie. I think Brackis Lossie knows that Justin Haley has a lot of talent. And I think he would eventually like to bring him into the organization on a full time basis in the future. So I think there is some thing to think about with Justin Haley maybe going to RFK in a long term future. But let's talk about this overall. I think Ricker Racing is up to something, and that's why they brought Justin Haley in. And Justin Haley, also someone who does finish a lot, Ricker mentioned this on Sirius and NASCAR Radio yesterday, that Justin Haley did mention basically has finished a lot better on the racetrack on a consistent basis every single week. But now let's talk about another side of things. What happens to call of racing heading into 2024? Because now they got to figure out who's going to end up driving. I mentioned this already, but the three main candidates who are potential possibilities for the 31 car are Austin Hill, Chandler Smith, and Shane Van Gisberg, and maybe outside chance of Matt the Benedetto. If you want my opinion, like I said, when I said earlier, I think it comes down to Austin Hill and Shane Van Gisbergen, who would be the first two choices for me. Austin Hill's been really, really strong in the Xfinity Series in the 2023 season. And I think he's also had a couple starts in the Cup this year, and they haven't gone great, but they've been with Beer Motorsports. And let's be honest, Beer Motorsports, they're not the fastest organization in the world. And Shane Van Gisbergen, who wants to go full-time Cup racing next year in 2024, he would be a really great and awesome candidate to potentially get behind the wheel a full-time college racing car in the 2024 season. Now, I'll still go back to Justin Haley talk about my expectations going into next year. What are my expectations? Well, I don't think Justin Haley is going to be a championship threat or a championship contender because, like I said, I don't think Rick Ware Racing is to that point and to that level just yet. But I think Justin Haley will surprise a lot of people next year. I think he will contend for some top 25s and some top 30s. But I expect him to perform worse than he's done in college racing. But I think long term, this is a really beneficial move because I think eventually, like I said, I think he will end up at RFK Racing in the long term future by 2024, perhaps, and in 25 or 26, I should say. Because Brad Kozlowski, let's be honest, he's getting up there in age. Kozlowski is 39 years old and will be 40 at the start of 2024. So we don't know how much longer Brad is going to stick around, but obviously we think we could honestly see him there for many, many years to come. But Justin Haley is also very, very young, and I think he will be a big benefit. I mean, he did a do decent when Spire Motorsports was back marker team, was somewhat of a consistent driver with that team, though it was in the back of the pack. He was doing decent with that team. But again, I think this is definitely a really big surprise and a shock to a lot of people. And I'm still shocked now that he is leaving Cog Racing. Because like, like, like I said, I really thought he would return to Cog Racing in the 2024 season. But I think a lot of fans, including myself, are a little bit surprised by this move. And again, I thought he would resign. I think that what happened in Atlanta makes a lot more sense when you think about it, though. I think he's the one that made a decision more than anything else. I don't think Matt Call kicked him out after what happened at Atlanta. I don't think that's what got him out. Obviously, they wanted to bring him back. Chris Rice really wanted to bring him back in their one decision by August. Well, they got their decision, and now they just got to figure out who's going to be the 31 car in 2024. But like I said, going back to speculation with Rick Ward Racing, like I said, I think there's a good chance they're going to downsize next year and focus on Justin Haley and himself, though I will say they could bring the 15 car back and have drivers maybe like Cole Custer run some select starts, maybe Haley Deacon, she makes her first Cup Series start. I think anything's possible at this particular point, and nothing's off the table currently at the moment when it comes to Rick Ware Racing. I thought they would continue being a two-car team, but maybe the downsides to one car and just focus on Justin Haley and focus on making that team much better, much stronger, and they give a charter a team like 2311 or Junior Motorsports, perhaps, or Trackhouse Racing, or another team like Spire Motorsports. We know Spire, they want to expand maybe next year in 2024. Nonetheless, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Justin Haley. I expect him to do decent, but not great, and probably will finish near the back of back in the Sandys next year in 2024. But I think long-term, this could be a pretty big and beneficial move for this team in the long-term future. So, that is going to be today's NASCAR news and motorsports news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and the channel notifications on to notify when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Link description below that, and comment your thoughts below on today's video. How do you think Justin Haley is going to perform at Ricker Racing in 2024? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And where do you think Shane Van Gisbergen drives in 2024? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Earlier today, I did a video talking about Shane Van Gisbergen and where I think he could end up driving in the 2024 season. Tomorrow on the channel, there is going to be a doubleheader on the channel. We'll have the Xfinity Series and Truck Series race reviews from Pocono. And then, of course, Sunday, we'll have the NASCAR Cup Series race review from Pocono. And then Monday, there should be a NASCAR news video dropping on the channel as well. 
So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.